might have thought I was joking about um, the checking out Oken books for the weekend for fun, but I've actually been uh, doing like practice problems and stuff, and I'm actually having a really good time. And I just got sidetracked. Well, not sidetracked, but during it, I figured it said like where the name ibuprofen came in came from and I hadn't known it and it comes from its structure. So ibuprofen, ibuprofen. So the ibu, so this, that's isobutyl. So basically isobutyl means that we have four carbons. So one, two, three, four carbons. And then the iso part is telling us that it's kind of like at the end. Um, it's like on this branch like this. So if we had just butyl, like n-butyl, so normal butyl, it would be like that. Um, but instead, we have isobutyl, so it's like this. So that's where the um, i part, i, I bu comes from, this part. Okay. What about the pro part? So the pro part is actually coming from propyl. Um, so butyl is four and uh, propyl is three. That's what this like means. Um, so it's like hexa, you know, all the ones that you might, that are more familiar maybe later, um, but the uh, propyl is three. Um, and so you have, um, one, two, three. Um, and so this ME is a methyl group. And so ME equals methyl equals CH3. So a carbon attached to three hydrogens. So this is where we get the um, propyl part from. Um, we give the ending YL when it's like attached to something. Um, so that's where the pro part comes in. And this fin part, well, that's referring to this fin, um, the phenol. It's like, um, has this ring structure. Spell a uh, Y-N-L, um, but ibuprofen uh, puts an F, oh, and this is also an E, I just can't spell. Okay, so that's where you get this part. Okay, so now that I've drawn over all this pretty structure though, why do I have this R and this S? So this goes back to what I was talking about, um, the, uh, I think it was last weekend, um, with the Nobel Prizes and the um, chirality. So kind of your right versus your left hands. So that's the situation we have here with these R and these S. And so they differ at this chiral center. So a chiral center is a place where you have a carbon attached to four different things. And they're, they, it's chiral because you can attach those things in like different ways. Um, so basically it has the same things attached, but with like different orientations in 3D space. And so we can represent these orientations in 3D space, the stereochemistry, using this wedge dash um, nomenclature where the wedge, so like the solid wedge, it's something's coming forward at you, bam, whereas the dash line, it's going away. Um, so you can see here we have the methyl coming forward and the hydrogen away, and here we have the hydrogen coming forward and the methyl away. Um, and if something is just like a solid line, this is all in the plane of the paper or the, well, whatever, the, the plane of the molecule. So this is all in the same plane, and then these are sticking off of it in different ways. And why this matters is because this S form is the active form in your body. So it inhibits um, like these Cox enzymes, which are involved in making inflammatory things. And so it inhibits those, so it can't make those inflammatory things. And so that's how it serves as an anti-inflammatory. But the S version is the active form. And when you make um, ibuprofen, like when you synthesize it in the lab or whatever, you get a racemic mixture. So you get a half and half mixture of each of these um, each of these um, isomer, these stereoisomers. So you get what is, we call this a racemic mixture of these enantiomers. Um, you get this racemic mixture of um, these isomers. And 
this isn't a problem though because your body can actually convert between them and so your body can take this r form and change it into the s form so it's less efficient than if you just gave them all s but your body can do it and so how does it do this well it needs to swap these around and it can't just go in there and swap them like you can't just like go and swap them what you have to do is you have to, it does this by making a flat intermediate so this enol intermediate so ene, so ene is um, what we call when we have like a carbon-carbon double bond. So that's the, where the ene comes from. And then all is for alcohol. So that's where you the OH. So you can see we have this um, ene, this, so this alkene group, and then the um, hydroxyls, the alcohol groups. And so this is what we call an enol. And why this is important is because it's, this is flat. Um, so you can see everything's, this is all in the plane of the paper, including this methyl group. So it's in the plane of the paper because the molecules want to try to like separate every, all the different groups as far as possible. And so when it does this, um, it puts them, the methyl is in the plane with these. Um, and so when you have that methyl in the plane, so now you're missing the hydrogen though, because you, 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 um, with this flat molecule. So we wanted to get, we need to get back to this form where we have a hydrogen and a methyl. And since it's flat, we can now add the hydrogen to either side. Um, so if we, that's what, so this is, uh, can go either way, but, um, when you have this, the hydrogen can be attached, attacked from the back or attacked from the front. And that would give you, um, so that's how you could go back to the hydrogen. But how does your body actually do it? So your body doesn't do it during, like, your body doesn't do it like this. Your body does it using the help of enzymes. Um, and so enzymes are um, often pro typically proteins, sometimes proteins and RNA, and they speed up reactions. And so your body isn't doing the synthesis in a the lab. They're doing this synthesis um, with the help of enzymes, and they're going to go through an intermediate so when your body does it, it's actually going to go um, through this coenzyme A intermediate. Um, so coenzyme A is this common cofactor that's used um, by an enzyme. So it's like a helper molecule inside of an enzyme. And so, and it's the part, it's actually going to attach temporarily to this, um, to the ibuprofen to help promote this flat enol. Um, and so what it's going to do is that first you have to make the acetyl-CoA, um, or sorry. So first you actually have to make um, that. And so it's done with this acyl-CoA synthesis. Um, so basically CO2, that means that you have this carboxylic acid group and what you're going to do is you're actually going to swap that out. You're going to swap this out for this CoA. And so the S is just, it's attached through this sulfur. So this is what we call a thioester, where you have um, like a C double bond O attached to a sulfur. This is a thioester. So an ester is where you have an oxygen attached to like this. So if, sorry, this is... So an ester would be the oxygen um, form of this. A thioester, um, so thio, that's referring to sulfur. And so this is the sulfur version. And so this is what this, this does, adding this in addition to kind of like making a handle for this enzyme to kind of use this molecule, it's actually going to help activate this, um, this chiral center. It's gonna activate this carbon. So what do I mean by that? It's going to make it easier to lose this hydrogen. So this is going to make this more acidic. It's going to pull electron density away from this area, away from this carbon. And electron, sharing electrons is how pairs of atoms form bonds. And so, hydrogen it only has a single electron and a single proton that it, so it's sharing this one electron but it only has a single proton so protons are the positively charged parts that need to rein in those electrons so the only pole that hydrogen has is a single proton carbon carbon has um carbon has um 
carbon has six protons. Um, I always have to think for a second because I always get that confused with oxygen. Um, so carbon has six, and so it has a better pull over the electrons in the bond. So this methyl is not going anywhere. So this CH3, it's not going anywhere. But this H can go, and this so this is it can act as an this can act as an acid. So lose that hydrogen. Okay, so and that when you lose that hydrogen, we can get to that flat enol form. And so basically in the pocket of the enzyme, so like in the active site is a base, so a hydrogen stealer. So basically, um, no pun intended, that base can steal the hydrogen. And when it steals the hydrogen, you're left with this awkward um, negative charge and lone pair on carbon, which carbon really doesn't like. But oxygen's cool with that. Um, and so the oxygen is going to, you. what you get is you can have this um, this pair of electrons, if we do this arrow pushing, um, go and make a double bond here, um, and then that goes to the oxygen. Um, and then, so you have an O minus, and that can get protonated to give you the O plus. Um, and so, but, so this is our enol, and it's achiral, so it's not chiral. So this is flat, and you can have the hydrogen attack because this group is going to be, um, this group can now um, get attacked by the hydrogen to give you that um, from either direction, but because it's happening in this enzyme, it's going to happen um, in the particular orientation that is going to give you the S um, isomer. And so now you go from this, so you've done with the help of this two aryl propionyl coa epimerase, um, so a epimerase is when something that like is switching the orientation of a single um, chiral center. So you're going from this to this. Um, and so it's doing this by promoting going through this flat intermediate. Um, and now you get this. Um, so we're almost there. We're almost to that S, but we still have this. Um, we still have this CoA attached. And so we to get this attach it. Um, is done with another enzyme, so with a hydrolase. Um, and so that uses water to then um, take off the CoA. So the water is going to attack, um, remove the, sulf the CoA, and then you're adding on water, so you're getting back to that carboxylic acid at your end. And now you've gone to your S. And you, this is only going to go from R to S in your body because... The, so we like in this initial step, the adding of the CoA by that um, by the acyl CoA synthetase, that's happening. That reaction is it's specific for the R um, because it's an enzyme. So it's basically it's like its pocket is shaped so that it catalyzes. It speeds up the R to S. Uh, it speeds up the R to this CoA form, but it's not going to do that to the S. So your body is going to go from the R to the S, but not from the S to the R. And this is good for us because the S is the active form in our body. And so that's how through these pa this series of steps, you can go from the R form to the coenzyme A form of the R. Then take that to um, remove the hydrogen, get it into that flat enol form. Then add the hydrogen back in a way that gives you the S form, um, but still with the CoA. And then remove that with the hydrolase to get you back to this, um, the S form.